This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to the Carlton Podcast. It is episode 15. I'm Tony Moclair. Mitch, Robbo, where's the number 12? He is the Kamikaze Kid Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Brand new apparel. <laughs> 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 this guy is talking. He's not even been introduced well, yet. No, well, come on. He is the third appearance on the podcast. We will reveal who it is in a second. Yeah, you, but first, you Robbo, up. how are you? I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good, mate. Um, yeah, the body's feeling not too bad. Uh, ready to redeem ourselves this week and uh, going forward. Um, at home, Emma's good, the son's good. Yeah, um, little chancy boy. Yeah, yep. the weather's terrible at the moment. Yeah, we've been training the in the fridge. We didn't ask you. Yeah, <laughs> he's hey, talk- out of it. Wait till the introduction. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. everything everything's good on my end, mate. Just um, win loss ratio is not not the best thing going. Yes, well, we will get to that, Robbo, as uh, as often we do. Uh, but firstly, our Why guest. Are- he was originally drafted to the AFL by Adelaide of all clubs oh. in the 2008 AFL rookie draft before being Boo. delisted after Boo. one season. Delisted. He returned to Victoria in 2009. He took the hit but got back on the bike. That's what I love. And signed up with Bocker in the VFL, Box Hill. Yeah. Played at a great oval there near Middleborough Road. Uh, while his season was cut short when he broke his leg in 2010, he or- had already polled enough votes to win the Box Hill BNF. I was going to say that. Because he, he's, well, we he's are doing the quiz. We are it? doing the quiz, but it's at the end, not okay. during the intro okay. to our guest. Following his success with Box Hill, he was chosen by the Blues with his with our first selection in the 2011 AFL Rookie Draft. Oh, I'm so glad we did. He's played 57 games for oh. the Blues. He's kicked 11 goals. Back from injury, he is the great Ed Kerno. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Tony. Cheers, Robbo. It's great to see you up and about. Uh, yeah, how many weeks were you injured there, Ed? Uh, I think it was about eight weeks. At so Box Hill or here? No, uh, uh, Carlton, mate, this okay. year. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so it was a long eight weeks, and I'm glad to be back playing with the team now. Didn't Just notice you missing. That's what's a bit shocking. Oh, Mitchell. <laughs> Well, on, well, you would have noticed it, Ed, because you are an extremely active person on and off the field. You love to ride your bike. You had a, a leg injury, Dog didn't life. you? You were hobbling around the club in Dog crutches for a life. while. Yes, yeah, look, crutches, uh, he, uh, I don't I'll enjoy give you a story. <laughs> I'll give you a story. He, um, uh, yeah, there's never it. been a bloke, this is what the doctor says, there's never been someone who's worn out crutches as quick as he has. He was meant to be off his feet for a couple of weeks. and I was off my the, feet, mate. I was on weren't. crutches. <laughs> 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 He's on one foot then. He's on one foot. He was meant to be resting up and he worn the bottom of his crutches out and to prove it, I told his stepdad Butters that um, <laughs> he'd been sending me some <laughs> Snapchats stepdad. of him with um, hashtag Dog yeah, Park Life. Yeah, maybe he's up on the Snapchats this yeah, year. But, let's um, get yeah, back we into can't talk about Snapchats. No, Sorry, Snapchat's been banned. Next, on Snapchat's next a banned. It's a ban. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, we've all, deli- we've all deleted Thanks. it now. Yeah, now, I've, I've it, um, you are something of a, a renaissance man. I just want to remind people, this is probably your about third appearance on, on the podcast. I love you, the podcast, Tony. You are, well, it's great to have you here. You are something of a renaissance man in that you are skilled and capable at many things. You are... Uh, an intellect, you're a... Intellect? No, hang on. I'll take that, Robbo. Intellect? Robbo, give me this yes, Yes, I'm about to go through I was it. talking to Taylor Walker at Adelaide a couple of weeks ago and he was saying <laughs> how <laughs> weirdo this bloke is. He's, not, he's only weird because he has an in, in, intensely active mind. Okay, he's very intellectual. Okay. It just starts. Okay, <laughs> now, listen to this for a CV. <laughs> a curriculum vitae. He rides everywhere. So, number one, that's great. He cares about physical fitness. Why did he ride everywhere? And, you know and the decongestion <laughs> of our roads. <laughs> He's a busy ambassador, that's why. Yeah. Not any other reasons. He's Two wheels for life, mate. <laughs> Two wheels for life. Currently renovating, currently renovating your house. Yes. Are you doing yeah. that yourself? No, I've got a friend of mine called Alex. Uh, Capel Builders, actually, to give him a plug on your Alex. Alex. Killing it. Um, but he's doing the job. Uh, Sammy Rowe doing any carpentry on it? No, nah, look, I, uh, I've seen some of Sammy Rowe and Dave Allard's work and I decided not to give him a call. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> nah, sorry, boys. They actually, are, they actually are quite good carpenters. So S&S, anyone else S&S out S&S there, S&S, S&S Constructions. No, nah, don't use them. Get the on board. Okay, it's the podcast of plugs today. <laughs> also, you're in the middle of an environmental engineering degree, but you've, oh. you've possibly deferred that. Have you deferred? No, I started Where, again. Okay, I started great. Again. Look, I've realised that... Uh, so hang on, are you telling the, me you won't the, play AFL till well, your mid-60s? with the way that Mitch Robinson's going about his business at the moment, 31 possessions, 10 clearances <laughs> on the weekend, 
I realise I probably might have to right? look for a job elsewhere at the end of the year, so wow. I decided Mate, I, might, seen a bloke, I might go back to uni. I've never seen a bloke and get my course done. on the sidelines and come straight back into the team. <laughs> unless you so, relate to the fitness coach. That's all I know. Come on, Some manner. You may have friends at the footy club, mate. And I don't have any of them. In my contract that uh, I want to... There could, there could be a romantic connection in there somewhere. We, we, we don't need to explore that at the moment. Tell us about yeah. an environmental engineering degree. Uh, Ed Kerno? Yeah, it's, been, it's been a long journey, this degree. I've probably started when I was 18, when I finished school, and I've had a couple of years out of it. But, yeah, I'm getting back involved. I've realised it's something I want to do and something I want to complete. So now, how long does the course actually go for? It's a four-year course. Oh. I've been in it for in and out six or seven years at yep. the moment. How do you go juggling <laughs> juggling the two? I mean, you get you get a you well, get enough time said, during the week, do you? Well, last year and a half, I haven't been involved basically because I kind of dropped out as I wasn't able to make classes. But the way the AFL is going now, they've given us heaps more time to to attend our university or placements, and a lot of guys are now doing st- their study or short course or they're getting a placement at work. So it's a great thing. It's, it's a great initiative setup. by the AFLPA to get that day off a week for yeah. studying, etc. So it's what good do you to do see that your you're day, taking Robert? the head on. What am I what doing? Do you, what do you do with your study day? I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm a full-time daddy. <laughs> full-time <laughs> yeah. dad. Oh, come, that's not a job. Mate. I'm that's working, not a job, I'm bust, Have you noticed how good I've been playing the last couple of weeks? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm doing all my work here and go home and I'm full-time dad. Okay. Well, I don't get distracted. Balanced life. You, you, you need the paid Opens parental eyes, leave mate. scheme Can just I? for you. This should be next. I swear. It's Who a, did you name your baby after, Mitch? Chance. You. Oh. Because you got the, you took, he had a chance at AFL and you, ta- you took it with both hands. <laughs> I love and it. And you just keep coming. I love that. You love keep it. coming. Love hey, that really quick. Take mate. that. It was. That's pretty yeah. fast. You take your dog everywhere with you, Ed Kerner. Who is your dog? Dog park. My, my dog is, uh, she's a Kelpie. Her name is Soku. Um... So Name cute. after a, uh, a Japanese leader, but anyway, we won't go into that. Shogun. She, she's at. <laughs> I've sent her home for the week, for a few weeks actually, whilst I'm uh, doing renovations at my house. So, so you originally have a few acres back home in Torquay, yeah. is that right? Mum and dad are down in Balbray, which is on the way to Anglesey, and they're about 20 acres, so Ooh, she any, loves it Any down cattle there. for Kelpie Soko? Dad's had a, he's, we've had a few Sheepdog. cattle. Sheepdog. Uh, yeah, we've got some sheepdog there as well. We've got one kelpie there, and Jack Russell, and a, an older dingo kelpie. So, Soku's got a few friends. More than you, then. Well, um, there were, so that's the Ed Kerno story. I do want to, uh, before we get on to to talking about the the GWS game, being delisted by a club early in your career, Ed. Where does that leave you? You're young, you're in. You're a long way from home. Adelaide is a hard city to be in, where you don't know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that like? Well, I think. Uh, just getting the opportunity to play there was probably in hot, like looking back was a really, really good experience. It probably helped me the following year um, to to gain a uh, contract with Box Hill. Yep. Um, but yeah, look, taught me a few things. The best thing about getting delisted from Adelaide was probably learning to have a life without football. Mm. And so that was probably what I'm most grateful for. And then also grateful again to get another opportunity. And so I don't want to uh, stuff this one up. Well, Incredibly uh, hard worker, so he deserves every every year he gets a contract. So, well, speaking of stuff, you know, yourself, kind of. let's talk GWS. Um, and on. just to segue again with Adelaide, I heard a part of the uh, the Mick Malthouse interview that was on CarltonFC.com.au website, where he's talking to the blokes from Five AA, uh, Bones McDermott being one great friend of uh, Sticks, and he was saying th- the problem with the playing group at the moment is y- you guys can. Get the, I guess, summon yourselves for the big game, like the Collingwood game that's coming up. But for games like Brisbane and GWS, there seems to be a bit of mental walkabout happening. Do you think that's a fair characterisation, Robbo? I think um, it seems to happen when our back's against the wall that we can actually... We, we we gel better as a team, and we think mm. you know we we don't we like we kind of stand up as one, and we come out to the game and we give it everything we got because it feels like we've nothing to lose type of thing. So it, it goes both ways. I, th- I don't know. It feel, I honestly, it felt like the last couple of weeks versus Hawthorne Geelong, we were definitely going the right direction. Yeah, we felt like we put a line in the sand and we're going forward and stuff. And it just I don't know, it just kind of baffles me sometimes when you when you come out. Not no disrespect to GWS, but you know we're hoping to get a win over there and then you know big game this week. So. What do you reckon, Kerner? Yeah, I agree with you, Mitch. I think it's consistency of effort, which is driving most of the players and coaches nuts, and and that's what we've we've got to improve on. So it is disappointing. 
Uh, yeah, we, we do have to congratulate GWS. A young team on the rise. There's a lot of guns in that team. They had, what, 27 first draft round picks, first-round draft picks. Not bad. So keep your eye on them. They just might go somewhere. But, um, th- again, their, their rate of effort was there. They were more determined. They, it seemed, Ed, like they had more to play for. Which is yeah, well, that's sad to say because I mean you'd hope we'd have just as much, if not more, to play for ourselves. So they they played really well on the weekend and and they they gave more effort than us, and that was the, what it came down to. And it was yeah, disappointing. It's been a tough week, and but we're looking forward to Collingwood now, which is probably a, a great game to sink our teeth into and and look for a rebound. I will get into that in a sec, but Robert, what was the flight back from Brisbane like, or from Queensland? Brisbane, um, out Queensland or Sydney? Oh, sorry, sorry, Sydney. I don't, uh, sorry, I don't have a blank there. Nah. From Sydney. Nah, um, we're in Melbourne at the moment as well. Yeah, we're in Melbourne, yeah. So, <laughs> we're in a, in um, yeah, the flight, obviously, you know, we just suffered a kind of a big loss. So, you know, we had a bit of a talk after the game. We kind of, you know, dissected a few areas where we thought, you know, we can base our, our pride on, I guess, where we let, uh, let ourselves down. So, I don't know. We, um, you know, The boys kind of stuck together and, you know, chewed out in the Virgin Lounge and kind of, Hung around for a little bit, then caught a flight back. But you know, obviously the mood was a bit down and stuff. But we've had, we've made it a focus that we're up and about. And, um, it's not the no end of the season fully yet. So mm. you know, we can still we still got a chance. But we just got to come in this week and hopefully all our stuff will you know come together and we'll get a big victory on uh, Sunday. Robo had about ten toasties in the Virgin Lounge. Well, he certainly earned them. You, you burn a few a calories because I actually had Maccas. I had Maccas down in the common area. <laughs> yeah, mate. I'm not gonna lie. It's my cheat night. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Well, I think uh, I think you'd earned it, Robbo. Tell us about your game. Thirty-one touches, and do you expect, as a result, close attention this week against Collingwood? Not at all. Um, because you, again, you've got to back up your effort over Goldsack yeah, and take another screamer. Yes, there we go. But no, um, we've heard a lot about these thirty-one touches. We too, haven't too. heard a lot about it at all. <laughs> well, we haven't heard it on the podcast, Robbo. <laughs> go. The floor podcast. is yours. Yeah, let, me again, my, let me get my notes out. <laughs> <laughs> I got my pages ready. Um, no, it's, it, was, it was good. Yeah, it was good to get in the midfield. I haven't um, been there for pretty much the whole year, so um, you know, I, t- I talked to Dean Ladley and said, "I think you know I've, I've got a chance to get in there and clear the ball for us, get the ball going forward, and hopefully provide some scoring options up forward." And um, it was just good to get in there and feel the feel the wrath of uh, Rob Warnock again because he's put him down my throat. So there's yeah. more credit to him than me. So you you stood in for Mark Murphy, did you? Was that pretty the much? Plan? Yeah, yeah. Mark, um, he he obviously he flew up and um, just just before the game, he you know he had a bit of a tight hammy, so we thought you know let's not let's not ruin a you know by four week injury by trying to play mm. through it. So we've seen that happen a couple of times, especially with Juddy and a couple of younger blokes um, early in the VFL. So yeah, we didn't want to risk it, and you know he'd be he'd be up and about this week and ready to come out as a, as a skipper would and wanted to, wanted to show the world that you know we're not out of out of the race. How are you feeling, Ed? How's the body holding up to the rigors of AFL after your eight-week layoff, where you got to do more renovations and ride around the bike, or, or you know, hang out with your dog and study philosophy and all that sort of stuff? No, I feel I feel good. I'm just very happy to be back part of the team, and I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to this week. I think you know, got a real chance against Collingwood this weekend if we can bring that effort that we 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 didn't bring on the weekend. So it'd be a really good chance for our group to to rebound and show show a bit of substance. Mm. We word of the day. Yeah, yeah, it, is, wanna, wanna. it is the word of the day. Well, we, we as, as somebody pointed out to me, we haven't beaten Collingwood under Mick yet, mm. and I know for sure that'd be peeing him off. See how yeah. I didn't say the other one. I said pee. Good yeah. radio. Yeah, nice. radio, radio, radio edits. Yeah, it was a bit of substance to that <laughs> yeah, self-editing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, obviously <laughs> that'd be um, that's you know that's not the top of the list, but uh, obviously a couple of years ago we beat all like Essendon, Richmond, and and Collingwood in our 2012 well, We had the wood so. on them for a while, no we pun did. intended, but we did, and it was great. Oh, great Collingwood. Pun. That's um, a great it substance. It was, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Ed. I'll, I'll take that compliment. In the spirit in which it was intended. Cameron Wood. Uh, how, Ed, how are we going to beat them? Our back line has been leaky. Yeah, well, the back line hasn't been helped from probably the midfield. Robbo would agree with that. And I think if in the middle we can win that battle, because Collingwood's midfield are elite. Yeah. So we'll, we'll aim to lock down... Our, couple of their key movers um, and then win enough ball ourselves and I think if we can l- lock it down in our forward line then we'll be a bigger chance I think on the weekend we were the ball was too quick to come out of our forward end so mm. this week we'll be focusing on keeping it down there and, and getting a few scores and uh, you got a, you got a game under your belt now so do you see yourself playing that um, on ball tagging role this week we, we haven't had our official meeting which we will on Friday no. so, so we'll, we'll just wait and see what the coaching group says I think 
Mitch, and then we'll go from there. But I can imagine we'll have a couple of players and, you play and myself against Collingwood. We haven't played them this year. Have we? Collingwood? Yep. yep. Oh, I didn't play. No, oh, you didn't really play. No. Robbo, oh, okay. as we know, no. took one of the marks of the year. On Goldie. And then, yeah, and then Poor drilled Goldie. it. Poor yeah. yeah, then snagged it. We actually uh, watched highlights of that this morning in the meeting. Did we? Yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, First you. goal of the game, oh, wasn't did it? Did we? Oh, me? A little of me? <laughs> it feels like this is a massive... In front of 80,000 people. Like a pump-up session or something. I'll feel like I'm getting teasy. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Now, um, uh, Cloak, what will be done about him? Ooh. 11 goals in the last two Big games. Cloakie, he's, um, he's been on fire the last couple of weeks. Um, it's, it's, I think he's seen his contested marking come back, come back into his game, which has been missing for most of the year. And... When he's up and about, he's a he's a deadly forward. So, um, no doubt we'll be sitting, you know, probably one of our tools in front of him, or mm. playing Jamo, Rowey, Whitey, or whoever on him, and playing paying close attention. It'd be attention. a group effort, won't it? Robert? I think it'll be a back six effort. Mm. But yeah. Um, yeah, as Kuno said, uh, it helps that when the midfielders are putting on pressure and making the ball not come in as good as they they can use it. And will Levi be the big target up forward? Is that what sort of? Yeah, look, I hope so. I think with Levi, we, we'd just love him to get up there and, and be our big marking kind of presence. And if not, bring it to the ground and allow our, young, our little little forwards to make contests and keep in the forward line and, and best case, kick a goal. So uh, I think Levi will still be up forward. Yeah, I mean, no I'm doubt. not a coach, but I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, there's obviously pressure on for this game, the redemption from last week. There's also a very big crowd that these games always... Always Peter Mack Cup. Yeah, yep. that's a very important very thing. Cause. It aids cancer research. The longest ever charity match in the VFL AFL history. Says Ed Kerno, completely mm. off the top of his head. This man comes to the podcast prepared. He spends three days studying. <laughs> Even he's, he's, he's living in a home that's time. not a home, it's a shell. They call he's me renovating. If he put Edward's the sounds of Kerno. hammers <laughs> and, and drills and, <laughs> and tradies making obscene phone mm. calls. He's there studying for the podcast. That's yeah. why he is a renaissance It's my devotion, devotion to the football Mate, club. Mate, if you put as can much time into the podcast as he did to your schoolwork, you'd be flying through that what's it, biology, <laughs> chemistry or something. Environmental engineering. But Can anyway, the Peter Mac Cup. Tell us more about it, Ed Kerno. Uh, well, I suppose, um, yeah, this Cup's been running. It's what the, one of the longest charity matches in the VFL history. And <laughs> Nailed it. Its inception was 22 years ago, uh, off the top of the head. It's raised more than... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very serious matter. It's it raised is. more than $1 million for cancer research and, and care at the Peter Max. Cancer Centre in Melbourne. So look, well, yeah, and it will be, of course, the first Peter McCallum Cup for the brand new official president of the Carlton Football Club, Mark Lejudache. Yes. Um, Have you met him, Mark? Just don't ask me to name the South Korean car sponsor of the Great Carlton Football Club. Over to you, Robbo. Hyundai. Thank you. Hyundai or Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah, there we go. So at Carlton's board meeting on Monday night, Mark officially took over from the retiring Stephen Kernahan as the next president of the Carlton Football Club. He's been a lifelong Carlton member. He's the managing director of Crawford's Group, a family-owned investment and development company uh, involved in uh, commercial, industrial and retail property. And further to his property interest, guys, he is a director of Premier Fruits Group, a national farming, marketing and logistics company. Mark Lejudice, come on down. Well, well hopefully Fruity. we'll get him in on the podcast. We'll certainly try. Well, I guess if, some free fruit from this Well, bloke. that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Could do with some of Mitch. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> it, it, just in that, we are currently searching still for a CEO. Can I? Any know, you know anyone? Well, no, I'm not no. available, mate. I'm playing this week. <laughs> I want, I want Carlton to be the first club with a playing CEO. Come oh, on, Ed. Come on, Robbo. Once he gets his uh, environmental uh, <laughs> oh, no, sorry, scholarship You can't down. do it, can you, Robbo, because you're a full time dad. I'm, I'm chuck a blocks, mate. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm busy. Full time with chance. I'm anyway. busy as, mate. You're going to be really busy when you've got two kids, too. I want five, so we'll see how we go. Oh, we oh. certainly hope so. You've got to milk that baby benefit for all it's worth, right? <laughs> you know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now, in happy news for the club this week, Bryce Gibbs has yep. re-signed. Gibber. Uh, Gibber, since it just seems to me, Robert, this is my uh, impression, that since all the, let's say, turbulence about whether or not he was going to re-sign has been settled, his playing has been much better. Is that? Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, um, obviously he's you know it's pretty one of his better years I think yeah. um, in stats wise, but also just the influence he's had on the group. He's um, back in the leadership group and he feels more comfortable um, putting himself out there, and you know it shows on the field too with leadership qualities. So 
no, it's a massive, massive plus and achievement. Good work to him. Five years, it's amazing. I couldn't mm. even get a year out of this club. So <laughs> if I had half his qualities, I'd be fine. But no, he's he's done he's done he's done really well. Um, 165 games. I think he's only missed five games in, in yeah. how long he's been here. So credit to himself. He works extremely hard, very professional, and yeah. he will be a one club player, which is very exciting. Oh, you never know. Really? Well, you know. Do you know something we don't? He well, signed for what, five four years? years he'll be five 30, years. so he yeah. might do like the one or two years in another club and make a few more hundred thousand dollars or something like that. So. He, he might be like a Craig Bradley, do you reckon? And oh, go I, think he's late I think he bleeds Boom. blue. Yeah. I think he bleeds nah, he, blue. He'll be here for, his, for the rest of his life. He's, um, he's, yeah. he, loves, he loves it here. I the think he's he, playing at the moment. Especially Hollywood Boulevard, fantastic. one to six. Sign him up. Yeah. Uh, so it's great. And it's great news for fans of the number four jumper, of course. He has well and truly oh. earned that. He's a, another champion, the likes of Luke Livingston, yes. who also yep. brought great glory to that jumper. And I can't think of anybody else who's a that particular number who's ever done anything for Carlton. Oh, I could probably name a couple Tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek <laughs> before you start uh, issuing death threats. Um, also, Troy Menzel, uh, tell us about his mark in the last quarter of the GWS game. That We seem to be a bit on fire this year with the marks. Mm. Oh. Well, Troy was doing the right thing and getting down back to help out, and he, he just plucked first. it on the centre-half back line. So. The first, Menzel getting out of the forward line. No, he's, um, <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, no it was a great mark. I, saw, I, was, I was on the bench, I'm pretty sure, and I saw it, and he um, kind of went back with courage and yeah. just stuck with one hand, looked kind of... Must have had the grippo on the fingers, I reckon. Must have, been, must have had it. Or something. Really stayed there. Quiz time! Quiz time! Right, time. Right, time. Quiz time. time. Okay, are we ready? Question me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> About what? Quiz. Quiz. Quizziness. Quiz. Okay, well, as you would know, uh, being on your third visit to the Carlton podcast, Ed Kerno. Yes. Um, at lots of time on the surfboard for you to think and mull mm. over your teammates. Mm. How often do you get to surf? Is it once a week or once a week? Twice if we're lucky. Yeah, and then there's a few. Few of us get down. Robo never comes for a surf. I don't oh. get invited to go anywhere outside the really? club. Not so even with 31 touches Whatever. in the game. Whatever. No. Yeah. People despise me because they're like, "How's he going to touch in there?" <laughs> who are the cool guys in the club who go surfing? Can you just let us the into cool, that? Cool. The cool guys. It's, yeah. They're not cool at all. Let's put it that way. Probably Tom, got, Tom like, Bell. Yeah, he's probably right. got Jared White. He's a stinker. Bryce the re-signer Gibbs he's, gets yeah, down every now and then. Terrible, cool hair. Um, oh, Dill Buckley fancies himself on a board. He's jumping on. Yeah. He's jumping on everything. He's yeah. a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, son of Jim. Hendo gives it a go. Yeah, when he's uh, when he's okay. He's another bloke. Um, Motorbike rider. Who else are we talking about? Oh, Dale Thomas, the new recruit. Okay. He's actually not too bad. Yeah. He's yeah. not too bad, is he? Big Dale. And um, um, you're missing one bloke. Crew. You're missing one more. Does a big white man get down there? Oh, a big wide, he gets on the boogie board. It's a professional at With everything. With Dave Allen. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it? Who would, so a shark, who would a shark most regret attacking out of that group? Probably Kerno because he stinks. Can you smell him? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, this is a, I can smell him now. Yeah, I'm probably the more of the bonier ones out of the group as well. Yeah. Uh, you're, a, you're at least 2% body fat. You're lying. <laughs> Come on, mate. I don't know. 10 pack. Who else? I reckon it'd be Jared Wade, surely. No, he'd be perfect oh. to eat. No. <laughs> yes, Jared, he would. Jared Wade would punch chewy. the shark. Would he? Of course he would. No, mate. And probably him. get two weeks for it knowing he's like... be a big enough meal for the yeah. shark. The shark <laughs> would get too full too early. Now, can you fill us in on this? Is it a wives' tale? Uh, we don't... We don't we when we when we No, you surf don't bleed. Because, you no, you don't... Bleed. Because, no, because shark, sharks think that it's a seal. It's like it's we don't worry about sharks like in Victoria, Tony. It's very rarely... Shark sightings. Down There's only those ten times. Just, just, just like ten times that happens. There's nothing good than a good urinate in the wetsuit. Okay, it's better. It's probably one of the best feelings. One of the better feelings. I used to be, uh, I used to be a pretty good boogie boarder back in my day. So. Oh, really? Yeah, mate. That right, comes mate, out now, Robert. Tasty's got the best ways in the country, less not in the world. Now, Ed, this is the quiz called Do You Know Your Teammates, Mitch Robertson and Ed Kerno? Oh. So what I'm going to do hard. is list off three, uh, like a series of clues. There's seven in all. And the first person who recognises the teammate has to buzz in with the name. Yeah, okay, are you ready? Yeah. Robbo, yes, I'm you are ready. on fire in the field, not so much in this I'm competition. Ready. So this is about respect and redemption for you, Mitch Robinson. If I win. And to be able to look son Chancy in the eye and say, Daddy did the family name proud today. <laughs> with me? <laughs> All right. I got you, man. I'm ready. Uh, that's what's on the line here. Shivers. Clue number one. <laughs> I made my debut for the Blues during a round three clash against Essendon in 2010. Buzz. Uh, Tui? Zach Tui? No. 
Oh. oh, Robbo leads the field open. Here's a second clue. I'm currently 10 games shy my of playing my 50th game for Carlton. All right, before being recruited by the what? Blues, I played 12 senior games in the Waffle and also represented the state of WA in the under-18 national championship. Buzz K. Lucas. Buzz David Allard. What's your answer? David yeah. Allard. No, K. Lucas! It is K. Lucas! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yes! 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 <laughs> Dave Allard. I uh, had Kane Lucas from the get go. Oh, Gordon Get Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess I can I can say I won that one. You've uh, Buzz Kane Lucas. Buzz over. <laughs> broke you quite a streak there, Robbo. Well done. <laughs> well, I had it, but he's buzzing all over the place. You don't say Buzz, you just say the answer. I tell you, the sooner that <laughs> game right ends up on TV with a nightly audience of a million, the better. I suspect that we should get a camera put up in here, like a little GoPro. <sighs> yeah, yeah, we know how much Lucas, fun we're having. Whose dad played 19 games for the Sydney Swans between 82 and 84. Really? In his junior years, he played at Trinity College WA, and most of his junior oh, football club was played posh. for the Melville Hawks. Trinity College. <laughs> to most people, he's commonly referred to by his nickname Sugar. as Sugar. Sugar Kane. There you go. Kane Sugar Lucas. Your nickname Real around the Sugar. club, Ed? Do you get Cheryl? <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. I don't have a nickname. Yes, you do. What is it? Kernow. Oh, yeah. Kern that later. Works. Kernow, Kern later. <laughs> that works. Ed, Kerno, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. Always lovely to have you. And Good Michelle luck. Michelle Robinson, thank you. <laughs> it's, Good great luck. To, it's great to have a relation of the Kane, Kane Corns brothers or the Corns brothers in, in the room with me. I just... Love it. He's related to him, by the way. Are you really? No, I'm not. That's another... <laughs> oh, okay. That's another slur against... what? Another what? silly stat from Mitchell in the corner. That was from A4 Record, actually. I can go down to this another silly the last, stat. The same last names came from the same country of origin when they were back in the olden days. Yeah. So they're related. Okay. okay. Thanks for coming down, Kerno. Anyway. We appreciate it, mate. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks Thank Robert. Thanks for having Good us. luck with the renovation and the degree and the dog. And most importantly, uh, against Collingwood. We look forward to a full-throated four-quarter effort and victory in the Peter McCallum Cup. Same to you, Robbo. Good luck next week. And we will catch you next week. I'm Tony Moclair on the Carlton Podcast. Yep.